This video is for educational purposes only and only competent persons should attempt this installation. Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel and today I'd like to show you how to wire a switch and a receptacle in a box that has five cables coming into it. First, I did box fill calculations per the 2020 NEC code to check and see if I would have enough room in the box for five 12 gauge cables, a switch, and a receptacle. It turned out that I had 38.1 cubic inches for the box plus a half inch mud ring, and my box fill came out to 36.6 cubic inches. I purposely made the numbers come out close for my video about box fill, but it wasn't long until I had challenges from viewers to do the actual wiring and show that it does fit. I thought that was an excellent idea. Here's the box. I already have the five ground wires from the five cables connected together with two grounding pigtails for the two devices. Note that I bent the ground wires into the upper left hand corner of the box and then I bent them down in the lower left hand corner of the box where the connector is and then the two pigtails come from that. There are five hot wires and five neutral wires. I have wire connectors on all of the hots and neutrals for safety because I'm going to do a test to find out which hot wire is the line wire which is the one which will bring the electrical energy into the box. I also want to test to make sure we have good voltage before I start. Now I'll turn on the circuit breaker and I'll use my fluke voltage detector to find which is the line wire. The tester tip will turn red and it will sound an audible alarm when the line wire is found. I'll mark the line wire and its neutral with red electrician's tape. Here I've put the probes of my meter into the ports of the Woggle lever nuts and I have found that we have 120.6 volts AC. And here I've taken my probe off of the neutral wire and put it on a ground wire. And once again, we have 120.6 volts AC. So we have excellent voltage and an excellent ground. This cable is the one that goes to the light. So I'll mark its hot and neutral wires with some gold tape. Next, I'll turn the circuit breaker off and test the wires with both my Fluke voltage sensor and my Fluke electrician's meter to be sure that the electricity is off. I'll work on the neutral wires next. The 20 amp receptacle will need a neutral wire going to its neutral side, but the switch will not need a neutral wire. I need a connector to connect all five neutral wires and one neutral pigtail. I'll select a six connector Wago push-in connector. When you push the wires into the connector, you can see through the clear connector body that the wires are all the way in. Then I'll push in my neutral pigtail. You can also use an extra large gray ideal wire nut for this application, but be sure that the wires are twisted together well and all the wires get all the way into the wire nut. There is no wire twisting necessary with the Wagos. I'd like to discuss wire management. For this group of wires, I'd like to start out by folding it into this corner right here. You see with the grounds, we folded it into this corner and then bent it down this way. So with the neutrals, I'm going to fold the wires into this corner and then down this way and I'll put the connector right here and scoot this one over just a little bit and then this neutral pigtail right here will be on this side ready to hook up to the receptacle. The receptacle is going to be right here and this is the neutral side of the receptacle so that's the way I'm going to do it. Here I've made my preliminary band up into the upper right hand corner and down into the lower left hand corner and I've got my little volt claw. This is a tool that my friend uh, Warren Tarbell invented. He is a master electrician and hey, you just take it. It's just a nice little tool to 
to help you push the wires in. Push the wires neatly back into the back of the box. Now it's time to work on the hot wires. The hot wire with the gold tape is the one which goes to the light. We will connect this wire to the right side of the switch as you will be looking at it. It will be carrying the current in a switched manner to the light. Now we have it where we want it for easy hookup. This leaves us with four hot wires which I will connect together with a six conductor wago. I'll push the four black hot wires into the wago. I've prepared two black pigtails which will provide power to the two devices. I'll insert the two pigtails into the wago. Now I'll push the four black conductors without the pigtails into the lower right hand corner of the box. I found a nice spot for the wago right here. So now I have a neutral wire and a hot wire ready for the receptacle. And I have a hot wire right here and a switched hot wire right here ready for the switch. And down here I have two ground wires, one each ready for each of the devices. At this time I would usually put it on the mud ring, but I'll hold off on putting it on to increase visibility for the viewers. This is a Leviton Decora Plus single pole switch. First I'll attach one of the green grounding pigtails to the switch and fasten it securely. Then I'll attach the other green grounding pigtail to the receptacle and tighten it down securely. Next, I'll attach the neutral wire to the silver neutral terminal of the receptacle and tighten it down securely with the back wire system. Now I'll attach the black hot wire to the bronze colored hot side of the receptacle and I'll tighten it down securely. This switch has bronze colored terminals on each side. I'll put the hot pigtail on the left side as you're looking at it and tighten it down securely. Then I'll attach the wire which goes to the light, which we call the load wire on the right side, and I'll tighten it down securely. I'll tighten down the remaining untightened screws, and I'll double check to make sure all the other screws are tightened down securely. Now I'll wrap each of the devices with black electrician's tape for extra safety. Now I'll get the devices in the position then I'll slip the mud ring over them and then I will tighten the mud ring to the box. With the mud ring, there's plenty of room for the devices. Without the mud ring, the box would have been overcrowded. Then I'll tighten the devices to the mud ring. And you want to try to get the devices just right, nice and straight, so that your faceplate fits first time. And if you haven't noticed it yet, us electricians have this thing about putting the screws vertically on each and every one of the screws. Now it's time to turn the circuit breaker on and try it out. Here's the lights working great. Off, on, off, on, off, on. That's great. Now for my outlet tester. The two green lights means correct wiring. So there you go. There was plenty of room in the box for both the Decora Plus 20 amp receptacle and the Decora Plus switch. This video is a part of a four part series. Number one in the series is about box fill calculations with new 2020 NEC changes in ground wire fill. Number two in the series is a quicker way to do box fill calculations. You're not actually cheating, but I called it cheat mode. And number three is answering a viewer's questions about do pigtails count in the 2020 NEC calculations and how to handle the seven ground wires. And then this video you just viewed is number four in the series. I'll put links for all four videos in my video description. I'll also put links in my video description for the ideal circuit breaker finder kit. Uh, and I use that outlet tester in the video. I'll put a link for the Kinepex electrical installation tool. And I'll put a link for the popular volt claw that I push the wires with. I'll put a link for the Fluke voltage detector. 
And I'll put a link for the Fluke 117 electrician's meter. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.